Okay, to start the cosine rule, you will also do a construction of triangle ABC with AC along the x-axis and angle A at the origin. So the following that I'm going to do is just to prepare this triangle so that we can prove the cosine rule. So I'm going to do it in pencil because I'm going to erase it later. So opposite big A, small a, opposite big C, small b, or C, and opposite big B, small b. So for this, I will put in, okay, before I do that, let's just quickly see whether or not we know what the coordinates of C is. So obviously the coordinates of A, 0, and 0. The coordinates of C is on the x-axis, so therefore my y is 0, and then the distance from A to C is small b. So that's the coordinates then there. The next challenge that we have is to determine the coordinates of B. Now, to do that, we will put in a perpendicular height again. But this is not going to be part of your construction because this is actually the part that you will have to study. So, if I look at that, remember, this is my perpendicular height. So, that's my H. Now, the distance from there to there, I don't know what it is, but I know that it is a x value. So, if I then look in terms of um, grade 10 mathematics and I work with the right angle triangle, I can see that if I work with um, angle A, I have my opposite and I have my hypotenuse. So, again, opposite and hypotenuse will work with sine of angle A, which is H over C. Again, I will change the subject of this formula by cross-multiplying. So H is equal to C sine of angle A. Now, please take into consideration that the H that I mentioned there and the H that I mentioned there is the same H. And that is then also the distance from for my y coordinate because if y was there 5, my y coordinate would be 5. So therefore, my y coordinate is C sine of angle A. So that's the first hurdle that I need to cross. Remember, you won't show this because it's not part of the marks, but you use this in preparation for the cosine rule. So let's now find the x-coordinate. Now remember for the x-coordinate we will use the adjacent sign. So we have adjacent and we have hypotenuse. So the function that we will use here is cos. So cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So then again I will change the subject because remember here I wanted to determine h because that was my h. Here I want to determine the x because that is my x coordinate. So in other words cross multiply so x equals to c cos of angle a and then that is my x coordinate here. Okay so for the proof now everything that I've done up to here was just in preparation. So that is why I'm going to erase it now. So what stays important here is that this is my small a, this is my small b, and that is my small c, and I have determined now the coordinates. So for me to be able to prove the cosine rule, I am going to use the distance formula. Now the distance formula that we used in analytical geometry. So this is the distance formula. So to be able to use this now for the cosine rule, please remember the following. I am not going to work with the square root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides so that I can just work without that. Now for this I'm going to determine the length of BC. Now remember, so BC squared now is actually small a squared. So please take that into consideration. And I'm now going to substitute 
the coordinates into my formula. So I will have C cos A minus B, everything squared, plus, and then the Y coordinates, C sine A minus zero, everything squared. Now remember, if I have a bracket to the power of two, I will need to foil this. I'm going to use a very old method that I used to teach grade nines in order to do the foil. So C um, cos A, C cos A minus B times minus B times. Remember you double this up, so it's going to be C cos a minus B times C cos A minus B. So it's going to foil. So first outer, inner, last. I'm not quite sure how you were taught this when you were in grade um, 9. Right, so then that is going to multiply with C cos A. C cos a and that's multiplying with minus b c cos a multiply by minus b right so i'm going to multiply those so this will give me c squared cos squared angle a this multiply minus b c cos angle a minus b c cos angle a and this will give me a positive b squared now remember those two are like terms. So minus 1, minus 1 will give me then minus 2 BC cos of angle A. And I'm going to take all of this now to my proof. Right, so this is my distance formula. And now I'm going to replace it with everything that I did previously. So I'm going to substitute now the coordinates. Right, and this calculations I've already done. Right, so this was the, co the calculations that I did. So this will then be C squared cos squared A minus 2BC cos angle A. And this will be plus B squared. Now remember this one also must be foiled. But because this is minus 0, I'm just going to square that one. So it will be plus C squared sine squared angle A. Now to simplify this, I want you to please pay attention to that part there. Whereas we have a C squared and a C squared. So I'm going to focus now on those two. So I'm going to take them and I'm going to say let's take C squared as a common factor. So I have left cos squared a plus sine squared a and the rest of the sum I'm going to copy and paste so it looks like that now when you think back about the identities this one will add up to one so then this will be the result which is now looking very familiar so a squared equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of angle A. And similarly, I will be able to prove this um, either other way around if I change that angle to angle B or if I change that angle to angle C. Right, and that then concludes the cosine rule. To start the area rule, we will again start with the construction of triangle ABC. We will again construct the perpendicular height H. And now you must remember those two coordinates that we already calculated in the previous with the cosine rule. So we're going to just fill that in. So with this, all the preparation for the area rule are done. Now please remember. Again, opposite big B, you will find small b, small a, small c. Next thing that I would like for you to remember is that this H is C sine angle A. Right, so 
the area of a triangle that we usually did is half times base times perpendicular height. Okay, so this is then half times the base of the triangle, which is now my orange B, times, so I'm substituting the values and then that is the area rule. So I have half BC sine angle A. And you can do exactly the same if you change the name of, if you rotate the name of the triangle. And please remember that it is not a definite thing that they will give you triangle ABC. They can give you triangle DEF, XYZ or whatever. And then you need to adapt your, your proofs in accordance to that triangle. Good luck everyone.